3, 2, 1, go! Hi everybody and welcome to New Hardcore Video Gamer episode 4. Well, <clears throat> it's the Sunday morning, the weather sucks, it's raining, it's foggy, it's cold, and well, how to best start this fourth episode, if not in a fucking British English style, yeah, by drinking some British English tea, English tea, whatever. Ugh. Mm. To go then on playing some fucking video games. Now, oh. um, apart from this, um, I changed my mind from the last time on, on, on which game, uh, uh, with which game to proceed. Uh, Quake 2, released in 1997, was scheduled originally, but uh, unfortunately the other workstation on which it's set up to, to work correctly is... Um, uh, I, I have to do some job, job on it, very important, so... Uh, that's... I decided to, to go on for a change, that's also possible, with another game released uh, nearly around the same same date, it's 1997, year 1997 as well. And um, yeah, instead as, as to the location of, of its creators, I think it's East European, because judging from the names, they sound like uh, Slovenian, Russian, Polish, and, and, and so on. <laughs> And whatever, and uh, well, the game is uh, of the same genre. It's entitled <clears throat> Cosmo the Rift, also known uh, with another name, which is Cosmo the Shadow Zone, and uh, well. I have a lot to say about this game. It uh, it's, was absolutely one of the first video games that I have tried. It was a demo. Uh, it was a demo. And, um, well, uh, many, many years later, I managed to, to get the full game and, uh, and to play it a little bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, my first impressions about about it were met as as expected. It's good. It has many many interesting things. Some of the things are common with Quake Two, but mm, I think that um, this time it, it will also be better to start up with this game. I have a lot to say about this game because. Um, I've known it for a longer time and um, have had some interesting thoughts about it even recently. And um, well, and well, however difficult it was to it was to set up to get it fucking working here. Um, an emulator, DOSBox, uh, with. This time also the ability to give you the high definition sound of, of the game, which is very important here, the sound are great. Full stereo and to synchronize it on this video. Every time we have some some surprises in this service, it's it's good. And um, well I had to update the game with a patch which makes it run correctly on DOSBox because the original one, the sound has some flaws, it, there's some noise, it seems interrupted and, and uh, just out of timing, sometimes it interrupts and yeah, that, that, it, that doesn't work well. Here the sound problems are at a minimum, sometimes there are some sound problems but Practically not. Uh, I had to set up 
the controls so that I can play comfortably. We here to play this game we use a mouse because otherwise one cannot uh, moment please um, one cannot uh, play well because it's a mouse control game. To, to do it well it needs a mouse control and the best thing is a good mouse. This one is a, a light control mouse. Uh, it's a light based mouse, the most indicated. It's a basic one, but yeah, for playing, just for showing and uh, discussing is good. It's it's not for uh, heavy gaming, but uh, for hardcore gaming, just for the sake of, of playing and, and talking about it a bit, it's, it's perfectly fine, this mouse. And well, the game. Uh, yeah, the game. I have to set up here the camera. But meanwhile, before doing so, let me read the story of the game. Because, yeah, hardcore gamers read also the text description of the game, the, the, the manual, okay? Mankind in the process of development is facing an inexplicable phenomenon. The destruction of the normal sequences of time from the past to the future. Time channels are forming in the Earth's atmosphere and these channels are leading to different periods of social development. Through these channels, the most aggressive creatures start to penetrate from both the past and present and from the future. So, there's a lot to be fucking scared of, but we don't get scared. You fucking kick ass and drink British English tea, yeah! Mm. You are the soldier of the special commander unit with a mission to locate pinpoint and finally destroy the time channels and eliminate all alien life forms. While migrating along time channels, all living creatures are undergoing irreversible mutations that are making them wild and aggressive. End of introduction. Now the synchronization. <laughs> Just this is part of the of the video series, eh? <laughs> Just to show you what a hardcore gamer is uh, is open to accept to do, to afford to do, in order to <laughs> communicate also to others what great thing these games are. We have the sound here. Okay. And if someone knows what the, the convolution operation is with signals, it tells that if there are two different signals, one here, the other one delayed, even if slightly maybe rescaled or disturbed, the convolution gives a direct delta as far from the origin is distantly the same signal is repeated. Radars work on this principle, for example. Also, some synchronization works on this principle, but the only difference is that I fucking have to do it manually because uh, programs don't do this automatically usually because um, best way to do videos is to record a high definition sound with the same device, a uh, high uh, HD camera with at which one can hook up a, a fucking microphone instead of doing like I do that there is a, a some device able to record a video in high definition and sound in low definition uh, and record the sound separately with a professional um, uh, high definition sound recording device and then synchronizing but so the synchronization just doesn't uh, yeah, it has to be polished up a little bit manually. That's very important. Now, we... Yeah. 
DOSBox comments here. We have the DOSBox console here, seeing everything is going fine. We have here the folder recording the high definition sound. This was a text that I had read you. The basic story about the language has to be known before playing. And, you know, that, yeah, the game offers an introduction. Our intelligence has received word of a disaster from one of the power stations. The last report on its status contained Help data showing a progressively increasing leak of electric energy. You can read it. Go to press. At first, it was considered a malfunction of the main generator. However, a careful investigation revealed that all the components of the system were functioning normally. Okay, we can go. Gradually. On. The leaks increased to catastrophic levels, which caused a complete shutdown of the main power generation system. This looks very much like the actions of the Time Strikers. Strickland, our technical consultant, will explain the details. Indeed, the rapid loss of energy may explain the appearance of these creatures. In my opinion, this is one of the most badass introductions ever. It's it's great. It just yeah, it's it's fantastic. In my opinion, clearly, at least they fucking explain something. Other games just one starts off with no explanation and, and nothing, and it's also supposed to fucking go and open the, the readme.txt file and read it. Here, at least something is is explained beyond what the text file says, but it's interesting to read both things, of course. Based on our experience from previous operations, we found that the monsters use energy fields of great magnitude in order to transport to our dimension, our time. In other words, they may appear in any part of the planet as if from nowhere. Also, we had sightings of a time channel, which appears when the time strikers arrive. These are the things uh, from where I've learned English. Yeah. The soldiers who witnessed it described it as a fluctuating green light of spherical shape. For now, this is all the information we have about the enemy. You will be dropped in the area of the warehouse at the power plant. It is enclosed with large construction on all sides. It is the safest place to drop you. The generator of the main section of the power plant is completely out of order. The station is poorly lit, using only the backup generators. Your main assignment will be to reach the power plant's wind turbines and turn them on as a source of additional power. After that, go to the helipad, where you will be picked up. Yeah. It has been some time since we've received word of the disaster. Time strikers have possibly reached the wind generators. Try to pay maximum attention. Any new information about these creatures will be extremely useful. Good luck. Get ready. Get ready. You are you leaving. leaving. Now. No. Good luck. Okay. We are fucking in the game. Now let me pick up the sound. Turn it on. Oh. Do a synchronization. Sorry, three, two, one. Because sound has to be synchronized. Three, two, one. Double synchron. Triple synchron. Quadruple. End of synchron. Okay. We are presented with that. An extremely interesting scene which one bird 
I could describe with fucking strong atmosphere. One of the first things that Bugged and I had tried to do with the game is yeah, to experiment with this weapon and see that it leaves signs in the walls. There's a sign of the fact that the game has been made with considerable care. In particular, I'm referring in this case to the game engine. Uh, other thing was that I tried to shoot this bitches here, different points. I realized that yeah, even if one hits them here, on the in the between of the sustaining rod, they just go off. But it's great because of interactivity of the world. Here we have an enemy, so we must keep, be careful. This game has extremely um, advanced controls. One has to at least control with the mouse the direction where one advances and uh, be able also to trigger the jump control. Okay, these light effects are great. This game uses mostly the, according to what I can see from it, the old school lighting which I have outlined in the previous uh, chapter of New Hardcore Video Gamer video series. Uh, well... First thing that strikes is that clearly this game was not made with the OpenGL library. It's fully implemented inside it. The whole thing. And is notwithstanding, there is lighting effects, as you can see. Uh, even if maybe it's limited to the classical school, but it's still great. And uh, also these rain effects, special effects of, of the projectiles, in fact, are great. This graphics library probably has been, uh, has been written completely from zero, and in fact it runs on, uh, on processor power. So it's uh, under emulator I cannot even turn the game or any well with a higher definition. Uh, but it is good, because the texture's resolution is does perfectly meet the average uh, furthest uh, things we can spot and um, and appreciate the fact that when they turn into a single pixels this graphical effect modeling of the overall atmosphere is perfect another first thing that has struck me in this game is that when we shoot this we just get a, the incredibly cool animation of, of of things. I have been hours staying here to check the collision detection system. There are some slowdowns occasionally. Sorry, that's that's like that. If here it doesn't detect the collision with the projectile, but whatever. Let's go on and show you some combat. Sorry, there was a slowdown in the emulation. Look at this. Simple effects, but they are just, just incredibly detailed, and the sound, full stereo, the atmosphere, that's all that I can say. Here, extremely interesting, you don't need a key to make this open, hell, why has to shoot there, show you some combat. Look the animation of the enemy. How great it is. It's full three dimensional. And when they get close, they just don't shoot at you, but they also kick you. The whole set of movements they can do is extremely detailed and so on. Other thing. Look. How did you see? It? All these effects, this ability to interact with the fucking environment that enhance the game greatly. We all come to the flaws of the game later. I wouldn't actually call them flaws, uh, but just limitations. Let's go on and have some fucking action. Up. Yeah, you know, you are up something. <laughs> can hit you well. Yeah, you can jump. Already being able to jump is a great thing here. 
Look at life. Can we take it out? Yeah! And the animation is fucking great. The polygonal model of these enemies is great. This... The fact that one can break these lights is, is also an additional aid. Beyond just having fucking fun for one's own amusement to go on and break things, it can also be used to, to train one's aiming abilities. <laughs> just... it's... There are flying enemies. The attack system of the enemies and the way to defeat them is extremely advanced. I don't want to spoiler you more. I want to show you the effects of the game, the special effects and so on. You have opened something where you, you don't know what. Locked. Okay. Look, a bug. The enemy doesn't see you. <laughs> you have to use the hit avoidance as much as you can. Fucking dying out, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nah, I will just amuse you. Look, I wanted to tell you these details in the game before going on to tell about the flaws of the game. Agree because the uh, present model, extremely detailed model imitation of the environment, as this has attracted my attention since the first times into understanding the features of, of the environment we are in. Uh, this uh, is of great scientific interest. Uh, the memories of this game has enhanced greatly all the time my interest in uh, natural sciences or what are usually called so. Uh, in particular those which anyway rely mostly on abstract and uh, fully understandable uh, models such as could be physics and so on. Syndrome. Syndrome. I just wanted to show you the weapons in this game, okay? Without spoiling further the fucking game. Now, look, we insert the code weapon. No. Weapon. Okay. We have this unlimited ammo. This extreme powerful. We have this badass bitch motherfucker. Look at the light effects. We have this four. This one, we have this. Look how the light goes on. Great, huh? Incredible. Very good. Seven. This is Ellen Mine, I can't show it. And the most deathly weapon is this. I'm a big enemy of the voiceover technique <laughs> to produce videos, but the uh, problem is in creating this one uh, required to make a high definition sound recording or the full stereo audio stream of the video game, which uh, we are presenting. Well, made it a little bit difficult to me, together also with the tedious work of setting up uh, it to work properly under on the, on the emulator and, and so on. Well, put all this together and understand that uh, in order to make well this episode, uh, the best option was the voiceover, otherwise we would have no episode at all, even if there are some important things to say here. 
and the game is uh, the game under examination <laughs> is uh, uh, it pretty kicks ass. It's it's cool, uh, and uh, apart from personal opinions, uh, it's also there's just a lot of I just have a lot to say about it. Well. <clears throat> Let's consider that uh, we are arriving here at uh, this area with these um, wind generators, wind generator fans, uh, and uh, well, just wanted to tell you how much I was at the time, but also now, fascinated by this, this animation here of the Vengeance. And I'll be explaining in detail why, and why uh, it's what thoughts I, I have about it, and why, how it helped me to progress. I mean, what, how, the fact of thinking to this, this scene, which well, I just could just stand there and, and stare at it for for minutes, something that I had been doing a lot in the past as well as in the near past future <clears throat> and so on. Now here what's fascinating about this scene quite objectively now, it's not now we are a little bit more outside the opinion sphere. Opinion sphere, yeah. I don't know if, it's, if that's the correct word. Uh, we can start to talk about that. Now, the movement of these Vanshafts, they, what is commonly called the animation, the, the three-dimensional animation of this, is, is really cool. It's, it's because the motion of these this, uh, fans is actually complex because not only the poly, or how, how it is called in, in English, the, the fan, is rotating. Not only the fan is rotating, but also the this uh, this body, uh, which, yeah, in real life should contain most of the times the generator, uh, the dynamo, so called. Uh, it, it moves. It makes some little turns right and left. Well, <laughs> it's relatively where it's right and left, but just moves of small angles, just spans repeatedly small angles, a bit here, a bit there, around the axis, which the, is the one imaginary axis that passes through the sustaining rod, to which the generator body is uh, fixed to. Hmm? Okay. Clearly, the, this animation is, is so perfect uh, that uh, clearly it's, it's, we can state almost uh, with certainty that in this game we have a typically generalized coordinates based animation and not a frame type of animation. For example, what we see, um, where we see a frame kind of animation, uh, or just di different models all each edited in a 3D model editor separately is just presented different ones different models are presented at different times uh, so that it seems that uh, yeah the model actually is, is moving mo moving smoothly in Tomb Raider 3 with those um, quad bike thing we have this kind of animation What's fascinating about this thing here is, uh, yeah, whenever I think to a dynamical system, in this case is, say, utterly an, an, a mechanical system exhibiting two degrees of freedom, one of the 
One of my favorite examples is this one. The other one is the carriage, the ideal carriage allowed to go for forward and backward uh, on a railway. Uh, a carriage to which a downward uh, pending pendulum is attached, which can only whose rotation axis is only one and is uh, perpendicular to the side face of the ideal box-like carriage. It's another type we call uh, mm, two degree of freedom dynamical system, but it's not usually, it's the one which is usually presented in academic contexts, but why this other one dynamical system that we, un we can see here is, is more interesting and also more complex. It's non-linear, clearly. And, uh, and there are, it offers a lot to think about interesting variations on it. For example, if we had, uh, we remove two of the, two or also one of the, let's say, we keep only one of the wings of the fan, and we, we try to analyze and simulate it as a dynamical system. It gets pretty uh, freaking complicated, and it's a typical non-linear system. Now I've been, like I said, often I, I have a problem to think of. A, good, a consistent percentage of examples that I think of come from video games directly. And this one here, this scene with these uh, rotating generators is one of those which I have uh, to which I have come back more most often, and that's cool. I do it now too. Another thing that this made me think of almost immediately is that uh, how important it is not just to separately study you now, or more important to know them than rather than study them clearly, not just separately electronic systems, even if we limit ourselves to line or electronic systems or the simple ones, and mechanical systems, that is articulated bodies like the, those systems studied by Lagrangian dynamics. But also the combination which is electromechanical systems. Uh, just anthropor, yeah, I, I'm not uh, into uh, elect electrical engineering, let alone uh, power electronics, which uh, uh, of whom electromechanical systems are, are much more typical. Uh, generators with control and security circuits attached to pulleys to what whatever other things. And I just realized that hey, but the whole key to understanding electromechanical systems is to understand also the formulation of electri electronic circuits, at least a subset of them, those, at least those, the, the linear part of them, those made by inductors, capacitors, ideal voltage generators, ideal current generators, and the ideal <laughs> operational amplifiers. The formulation of them uh, with Lagrangian dynamics, hmm? because it's possible. And just when I I had the I, I the idea, hey, the key to understand it is that just revise well the two formulations for the Lagrangian dynamics of the two types of uh, dynamical systems, electronic and mechanical, and just start to reason how to combine them. Once understood some of the basic examples, one can just open any technical book on the subject and understand it perfectly. Uh, the other thing that may, made me think of, of this scene here, let's just go on from, go on with the game, meanwhile listen to the great sounds of the game, the sound effects. So the other thing is that 
the first times I I came to this this part of the game, I thought, hey, it's it's um non-polluting kind of energy source, those of vent ventilators and so on, and uh, yeah, I have, I have since then been a a defender of clean environment. I'm really concerned. I've been concerned about the subject. And another thing which reconnects directly to this is that, hey, those thoughts that I, those things that I thought about, the importance also to try a little bit to understand or to formulate and simulate electromechanical systems is extremely important in the context of environment defense as well. Because understanding well the uh, mechanical part also of electromechanical systems, even more they are not linear, and we have to, for convenience, come maybe to a linear approximation and verify it, is it whatever. Even if it's non-linear, it has to be understood well too. Because if we understand how an, an electro, how the mechanical part of a high power electromechanical systems such as those vent shafts work, we can construct better the control uh, power distribution, accumulation, measurement, security, circuitry, because we understand the phenomenon, the mechanical part of the phenomenon, and then we can outline more precisely the control circuit and energy distribution part. And if we can outline it better, we can make a design which has fewer elements in it, so it has less likeliness to break, it's easier to repair, it costs less, it costs less, and uh, it's easier to repair, we don't have to throw everything away and buy new. And it's also Few a system made of fewer elements is easier to design in order to be reliable and long-lasting, heavy-duty, and it's so fucking important. I, it's, yeah, I can, can't tell actually how much the sane of the wind generators in this game just how many to how many problems it attracted my attention, problems which I've been. Uh, concerned about coherently over the years until now. And, uh, yeah, I think I have outlined this point. Uh, I even don't uh, say that I hope that it, I haven't been boring, because real, really that these topics shouldn't be boring. It's electromechanical systems and their design, simulation and everything is important also for environmental defense, for the well-being of people. Uh, safety in uh, the electrical power distribution and another thing and here comes something new too because I I say I, I'm, I'm fucking remain 13 fucking years old in my mind and for this uh, yeah social consequences have been a disaster but uh, on the other side thanks to this I'm extremely fresh in mind and I had new ideas even now just other day thinking, thinking now. I'm not fucking old, but yeah, I had a completely new idea just by staring again at the, at the scene with the wind generators in this fucking video game. And it's this, this being able to formulate well with language and dynamics and even heavily non linear mechanical systems such as the one of, of those wind. Uh, wind generators and many other similar mechanisms that we can find in, we find in, in engineering and uh, high power generators and so on. Understanding well that and knowing within which limits and with which techniques and under what verification processes one can do a line, also, well, it's fine also a linearized uh, approximation of it. One can do directly a simulation of the whole electromechanical system by replacing the uh, the mechanical part, the mechanical contribution to the 
Lagrangian equation is motion the mechanical part to the uh, kinetic energy function from which then we 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 either have all the we have all the all the system of uh, Lagrangian equations to motion which uh, lead us to directly to a numerical simulation as well. Uh, one can fucking design an electronic equivalent of the mechanical system and put it into a simulator together with the other circuitry, define it into a, feed it into a simulator like a SPICE electrical circuit simulator and fucking do the simulation even without the need to fucking combine two different simulators, one for articulated bodies, just as such as could be, for example, the LDNFS simulator that I, I have developed uh, and uh, finalized some, some years ago and um, so tried to document it. Uh, I'm still, yeah, a little bit at, at work with it because it's long to finish. And a circuit simulator and then, then somehow interface the two programs, what force, what action does one on the other and fuck off everything. Yeah, one does an e electronic equivalent, equivalent to some extent, at least in a linear, within linear decision limits in, in, into the SPICE simulation together with the other circuitry and does a simulation. And that's all. And here it's important we know what uh, theoretical instruments we are using, what's their mathematical background, what they can be for, actually how they these apparently abstract um, mathematical formulations actually interface with real measurements and so on. And, and uh, we can uh, come to an extremely useful thing, maybe irreplaceable. That with a fucking electronic simulator, we can also do, yeah, the simulation of the mechanical part within some limits. When that's clearly not the predominant part, because, yeah, no, clearly. Hmm. I'm fucking not directing a science fiction movie with absolutely no scientific basement, so I'm not trying to talk about futuristic universal tools or what, what the fuck. But just stating things as, as, as they are according to modern science. And uh, the new lie that the computation technology, computing technology and gaming has cast on different uh, branches on the um, simulation methods, measurement methods, mathematical uh, formulations and, and so on, visualization of uh, these uh, things. And also the way that one can go about thinking uh, to the um, 